Whenever we talk about filters, the first parameter that comes to mind is certainly the cutoff frequency. However, today we would like to talk about another one, which might be equally as important, the amplitude. And to do so, we will use our Kunsa filter. In today's video, we will talk about some topics that we introduced earlier, for example, gain staging and saturation. And if you want to learn more, I will link to that video here and in the description. However, we must make a very important disclaimer because a filter by definition is a circuit designed to change a sound. So it would be presumptuous to expect a setting that gives us the same sound that we patched to the input, basically unaltered. So gain staging on filters might be hard to understand because we don't have an ideal non-distorted sound output to use as a reference. Still, we can get a very nice idea on how Kunsa handles amplitude. Let us say that there are three points where we can change our sound's amplitude across Kunsa, namely the input VCA, the character circuit and the output mixing section. However, there are two other parameters extremely important in gain staging, which are the Q knob and the filter behavior switch. We will go through all of them one by one throughout the video. Let us start from the input VCA, which defines our sound's amplitude before it gets into the filter. It can go past the unity gain, so it can feed the filter with a signal louder than the one we patched to the input. This can be useful to boost particularly weak signals or to have a stronger filter distortion that we will see later on. The second point, the character knob, doesn't even control an amplifier, but it can have a dramatic impact over our sound's amplitude. So we have said that when the sound comes out of the input VCA and gets into the filter, it can saturate it. But how? If the character knob is all the way to the left, it means that there is a sort of safety circuit that tames the filter saturation and keeps it under control. It consists of two soft clipping circuits similar to those we can find on the CGM. Since Kunsa is a four-pole filter, the soft clipping circuits are placed before each couple of poles. Whenever the signal out of the VCA exceeds a certain threshold, they keep it down by smoothing its upper and lower edges, hence the name soft clipping. As we rotate the character knob clockwise, we will remove those safety brakes, so to speak, and we will let our sound free to overload the filter. Okay, so let us start by listening to this very loud uh, sawtooth wave that, and then patch it into the Kunsa. Let's take the low pass filter output, which right now is set to 24 dB per octave with this mm, very mm, with this setting that I don't particularly recommend, so no Q and uh, the color, the character circuit completely to the left. And uh, the input VCA is uh, here, which is a sort of a safe zone, so it is not overloading the circuit. You can see that the and here that the amplitude is much, much quieter. With this setting here, if I set my low pass filter to 12 dB per octave, it will sound louder. Because I have a less uh, steep uh, slope and I am letting more sound pass through, which is reinforcing also the amplitude I perceive. Let's select 24 again and start playing with the character knob. You can hear and also see here on the vometer that we are adding much more gain by letting the signal feed the circuit and overload it. And now I don't have that much difference from the 12 to the 24 dB per octave. At this point, I can even push the input VCA even further and add even more color. But I haven't played with the Q setting, but even right now you can see and hear that we are getting close to the amplitude I had earlier, even if the sound has changed a bit due to the filter action on it. Now, before moving to the last point where we can change our sound's amplitude, let us talk about the Q parameter. The Q knob technically also increases our sound's amplitude, but only across the cutoff frequency. Remember when we talked about feedback in our previous video on gain staging? The Q knob does the same, but in a very controlled way. 
especially regarding the sounds phase. If I start adding some resonance and pushing it, and emphasizing the cutoff frequency, you can see that we are easily getting out of hand and we are reaching also the peak here on the master on. So we are talking about this much gain that we can add to our sound. However, there is also another element to consider because Kunsa's filters are multimode. And uh, if we listen to the other output, we will perceive different uh, uh, amplitude. For example, the bandpass that we need to tune to the sorted frequency, which is almost inaudible by default and the high pass, which is slightly louder when completely open. But... Which is more or less the same as this filter here. And we tuned these by ear according to what could have sounded better. But there is also another reason because uh, the different because the different filter behave differently to circuit overloading and high Q settings so for example our bandpass filter which is the quietest one of the three which is right now is roughly around this mark here if I saturate it and then add color and then add Q you will see how much gain it can have. This is probably one of my favorite sound out of the console. As you can see, in the case of the bandpass filter, the Q and character combination can dramatically change the sound's amplitude. At a low character setting, the Q knob allows us to emphasize the cutoff frequency. At high character settings, it can become a real reinforcement tool. We have this uh, sawtooth here, which is going to a high pass filter that in this part here is not doing much, but as we increase the character and the Q, We can add a subharmonic as a reinforcement to like this. And finally, there is another mixing stage to consider, the group output. Just like on the CGM, the group outputs allow us to mix more filters together. Two very important things on these outputs. Number one, each output fader can pass unity gain, so it can pump the filter volume up a little bit. Number two, since we are summing four filters, our output stage will have to handle four times a single filter's amplitude. So the filters can be summed in three groups. This output here has the sum of filters 1 and 2, this one has the sum of filters 3 and 4, and this one has the sum of filters 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it's the all output. But first let us compare a filter taken from the local output and from the group output with the knob all the way to the right. So now I patch both of them to the same uh, channel and I use the crossfade mode to pass from one to another still in a mono sum. I am not saturating the channel and I am using a pretty uh, conservative gain staging on the CGM. So if we monitor the local output and this first output here, even if we have only one filter, we can perceive quite a noticeable gain increment. And uh, if we monitor the quadruple output, on the other hand, the out is more or less the same, even if a gentle increment is still slightly perceivable. This is a design choice to keep more headroom for the quadruple output and avoid any inappropriate saturation. 
because these outputs here have to deal with two filters each but this one has to deal with four of them so it would need uh, twice as much headroom. There is also another difference because the quadrupole output has a gentle shelving at the top frequencies, roughly 1 dB, and this was meant to add an extra difference between the four outputs, and we did this trick with Fumana as well. With that being said, we can even think about saturating the group outputs with various results. So right now we have plenty of headroom, we have this soothing droning melody and we can start cranking the outputs up and experience some sort of saturation Another thing worth keeping in mind with the Kunsa is the combo mode that we can activate through this switch here when engaged, it links the cutoff frequency and the amplitude in a non-linear way. The main purpose is to provide an organic tone when we use the pink circuit, on which you can see the video that I will link here and in the description. So for example, right now I have a 12 dB per octave filter behavior, and when I engage the combo mode, you will experience a volume drop at low frequencies. Let's tune down our oscillator. The main reason we designed this feature is uh, to use it uh, when we are pinging the filter to have a more organic response. That attenuates both the amplitude and the frequency as when as it approaches a lower level on which you can see the video that we link here and in the description. But this response might be useful when we have high Q and character settings and we are sweeping with a high self-oscillating filter. Because if we uh, use it in just filter mode, we might reach some frequencies where we are overemphasizing our sound and we are having a loud, uh, inappropriate saturation. So if we engage the combo mode, we can have a more tamed behavior, especially with the bandpass. The thing worth keeping in mind when playing with the combo mode is that when we are using a behavior like the high pass, since every control over the frequency also starts reducing the amplitude past a certain threshold, we might experience a unexpected volume drop at very low cutoff frequencies. which might be something worth exploring for some particular effects. And I think that we can have it here for today. I hope you found this video useful and I will see you next time.